So of course, right after I make the video about the black fire, I realized there's another thing that I could do with it that I hadn't thought of before. So if you look, this is a very, very large cutting section, right? Now, I'm sorry, let me, let me move this a little bit further so we can see. You can see this large cutting section. My thought is this, if I cut off all of this and I reshape it, I could potentially have a diagonal cutter multi-tool. Now this may not work. So if you're watching this, please make sure you watch it all the way through before you attempt it because it may not work for you. And considering these are discontinued, this is, generally speaking, it's a risk. I do have one more coming, but I would prefer to have one diagonal cutter and one um, electrician's, um, what do you call it, plier as well. So we're going to try this. We're going to give it a shot. And I have a bunch of gear here to use to, to make this happen. All of my modifying gear, whether it's the Dremel tool, the bits, the uh, face shield, it's all in a um, idea list on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description. If you have any other specific questions or you're looking for something specific, either the items that I'm showing are too expensive or otherwise, I can probably find alternatives. Just ask me down in the comments, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Just see what happens and go from there. So the first thing I need to do here is create a rough cut. So I wanna cut these off, but I have to be very careful because I don't wanna ruin any heat treatment or temper that is on these. So what I have is I have a rag that is soaked in water. And the idea here is to cool down the plier head as much as possible as I'm doing this. Once I get the rough cut off, I'm gonna take the Canonian blade grinder and I'm gonna actually shape the tool to make it work a little bit better. So just, you know, kind of getting most of the material off with one of these um, cutting wheels really helps. And I, I gotta say, I love this quick exchange system. So whenever I break a disc, it's not a big deal. Speaking of breaking discs, if you've ever had one fly at your face, you're gonna wanna get one of these face shields. It's way worth it and it lets me get up close and personal. And I like to, to actually see what I'm doing so being that close, I wanna make sure that not only is my face protected, but also my neck. So I don't usually wear gloves, but I always wear something to cover my eyes when I'm using the discs specifically. All right, let's get going.
So I just want to take a brief moment here and talk about these cutting discs. I have purchased cheap cutting discs in the past and I will never do so again. I've had them snap and come off at high speeds at my face. But because this disc, and let me take it off so you can see, is, is meshed. Essentially, everything's connected. You can't, you can't have, this disc isn't going to come off like that. So yeah, it'll wear down, but it's not the kind of safety risk that many of the other discs are. And it's just way easier to actually lock in place and replace right on the spot. I cannot recommend this system enough. The kit that I showed at the beginning, which is in my shopping list, is the one kit that you need for this. And do not buy cheap discs. We're talking serious safety hazard here. Do yourself a favor, pay the whatever the $30, $40 that kit costs and get some decent cutting wheels. All right, let's carry on. Check out this cross section. It is a surprisingly fine grain for a tool like this. Just kind of a cool thing. Okay, so from here I'm going to grind the shape, but I wouldn't usually do that. At this point I would use the Dremel tool to remove a lot more of the metal. This isn't ideal, but the problem with the Dremel tool and the Dremel brand in general is that they overheat very, very easily. And uh, I'm, I'm not that satisfied with the Dremel tool brand. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna look for a different uh, rotary tool in the near future, but yeah, I gotta switch to the WorkSharp. I, I, use mo I use this mostly anyway, and it never overheats, ever. Like this thing is amazing. I, and I've used it so much. In fact, I use it more than my Dremel tool nowadays. But I can't find the 80 grit belts. So I'm hoping I have enough grit among the belts that I currently have to do this. I do need to order some more 80 grit and 120 grit belts for this because I, I use it. Like whenever I do modding, I always end up doing a ton of this. So let's go ahead and see how far we get. We may not be able to finish it with the amount of belts I have, but we'll try. So five seconds into that, I already realized it's gonna take forever if I use those belts. I gotta use the discs. So I'm just gonna have to manage the heat as best I can. And then uh, when I can switch over, I will. But it's gonna have to be minor work on the Ken Onion this time around until I get some new belts. I don't know what it is, but this metal is really hard. Um, it's just not performing the same way a Leatherman is in a good way. It's really hard. Uh, so I'm going to have to switch to grinding wheels. I'm probably going to end up going through a bunch of them. And this kit comes in that same pa package. And what's cool is it's like a quick change. So you just slot it on, which is really easy. And then click down and then just press the black button, the silver button and it pops right off. It's awesome. Love these things. Anyway, 
Let's get to it. Somebody remind me to buy an angle grinder? Jesus Christ, this is gonna take a while, for sure. Wait, I just remembered, I actually have an angle grinder. And now we're gonna try it for the first time. <laughs> I've been modding multi-tools for a long time. I have never had to pull out an angle grinder to work on a multi-tool but we'll be here literally forever if I don't. So for this, it's definitely gloves and eye protection. Yeah, and uh, really I should be wearing a mask, but I'm skipping that because, you know, whatever. But definitely eye protection for sure. Got the, uh, the piece all screwed in, little cutting wheel that came with. I won't be using it for that long, hopefully, but uh, we're gonna make it happen. And uh, we're definitely going to want to cool this plier off as we go. So let's uh, try it, see what happens. Move this out of the way so we don't get sparks on my phone. All right, let's make it happen. Before I go get in some more water, I'll put this over here. This is where we're at. So, I think we're pretty close to switching over to the Ken Onion Blade Grinder. So what I need to do is I need to angle this. I need to remove some of that material with the um, 
angle grinder, kind of bring it out to the to the edge like that. And then from there, I think we're pretty damn close. I don't want to go all the way to the cutters. I want to All right, we got a little bit further to go. So, let's go ahead and uh, get to it. You know, I think at this point we could probably uh, switch to the Ken Onion Blade Grinder. All right, here we go. Check this out. I love that Ken Onion Blade Grinder as a finishing tool because it just doesn't generate any heat, which is kind of awesome. All right, I think that's as far as I want to take it for today. I think I could have done a better shape probably I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that would have done better than me, but I'm pretty damn happy with this result so far. And it's a proof of concept that it is possible for you to have a diagonal cutter multi-tool. Very cool. With all of that done, holy gosh, that was a, a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Thank God I actually had an a, uh, angle grinder because that would have not been possible without it. And the results are beautiful. Yes, that is so nice. Oh my gosh, I am so happy with that. Um, now, whether I have ruined the heat treatment or not is a whole nother problem. That's all possible. What I have proven is it is absolutely, you know, possible for a company to come out with something like this. And we still have not seen it. If there is a platform that makes sense, it's probably diagonal cutters in a multi-tool more than pliers, if I'm really thinking about it. Because all of the force in a diagonal cutter is going in the same direction. There's no torquing like you would find in a, a, you know, a normal multi-tool. And because of that, you're not going to get the same kind of strains that tend to break most multi-tools. So with a proper forged plier head, I think that this is a real 
thing that should happen. And I am really, really pleased with this. Um, now I actually have a folding diagonal cutter. How cool is that? How cool is that? And yeah, it did cut down the weight quite a bit. So that is neat as well. And because it's so short now, I actually could probably fit this into a couple of different frames. I might even try to fit it into a Leatherman Blast frame, just because it's a smaller package. Um, but then again, the Leatherman Core has more leverage. I don't know which one I'll do yet. But either way, it should fit with, modify, with modifying the hole, so I drill out the hole and fit it into a Leatherman. But for now, I'm actually happy with it in this form. Um, this isn't even that bad as a, a platform. It still has that one-handed blade. It has the bit holder. So yeah, this is a modified multi-tool that is now a diagonal cutter. And of all the tools, this one made the most sense because of course it had cutters that came together and it had a very long cutting section. So there you go. Klein, take note, make this.